I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need it! No, seriously, I, I don't need it. Though I gotta say, if I had $4,000 sitting around burning a hole in something, I don't know. Lowering springs, intake tune, plugs, thermostat, methanol injection, exhaust, unleashed performance, custom tunes, E3093. Yeah, the typical SHO stuff. The really tempting part, it's even in my neck of the woods. The dude's literally like 10 minutes away. I've seen this car a lot driving around. I, I don't know if I would. I don't even know if I would get another SHO. I'm not sure if I really would. And the reason being is not to say that the SHO is a bad car. Well, let me put it this way. Like a lot of Ford's cars, especially ones that are more performance oriented, it's very limited. Like, yes, can it be fast? Sure. Is the engine capable? Yes, it is. Even though it's not the best of the V6 EcoBoost, as long as all the problem parts are taken care of, it's pretty stout and can handle a good amount of power. On transmission, eh, you know, not so much. A built transmission, eh, I don't know, they're quirky. And that's the thing, it's not so much the engine on these cars that suck, it's the transmission the, and, and the all-wheel drive system is the Achilles heel to this car being really, really good. It's a car that has potential, but in order to reach its max potential, you either have to spend unbelievable amounts of money reaching that potential, which at that point you could just already buy, you know, another car that is faster and better equipped to go faster from the start. So it's what makes the SHO a very tough sell. I think the SHO, and through my experience, the SHO is a great daily driver that is quick. Throw a tune in it, I don't care. I Stock turbos, maybe put a little exhaust on for some sound. Just throw a damn tune in it for 93 octane and enjoy it. Maybe lower it down on some nice wheels and, and whatnot. But otherwise, I think that's like the best way to enjoy an SHO. And it's just a big, comfortable car. I think if I was ever going to do something like that again, I always thought about taking a uh, like 2012 or so uh, Fusion, Ford Fusion all-wheel drive, because I'm pretty sure they use the same drivetrain, or it's a very similar drivetrain, and you know that was adapted to the SHO. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, these are all newer Fusions. Fusion, all-wheel drive. So you gotta get the Fusion Sport. I forgot, you can get a V6 Fusion Sport in the new one. Ah, uh, no. But this is the one I'm talking about, right here. These were interesting cars. I actually wanted one of these. They're pretty good cars. Um, and they were quick. You know, you can get them in front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. It was always the question, well, all-wheel drive was better, but... You had that added weight penalty. I think the front wheel drive versions were like three, 400 pounds lighter. The V6 is the Duratec V6. And the EcoBoost engines really were kind of built off of the Duratec architecture for the most part. Not to say I would necessarily turbocharge the V6 in here or do something, but you could. You could either do that or you could swap in a 3.5 EcoBoost, right in place of this 3.5 uh, Duratec. And the benefit here was, well, I think these Fusion Sports weigh 3,500 pounds. The all-wheel drive ones weigh 3,500 pounds or something like that. They're, they weren't that heavy compared to the SHO. So you had a lighter car, which means that you could probably get away with more power on the factory all-wheel drive system and transmission. It probably wouldn't stress it out as much because you're, it's not trying to push as much weight. You know, like that was the whole thing. I'm like, man, that would be one hell of a sleeper. <laughs> I would not see that coming. I always thought that would make a cool project. I think before I spent money on the SHO, I would try to do something like this just because I'm crazy. But yeah, I think my days of the SHOs are over. Now, I always wanted a, uh, what do you call it? You know, a Gen 1, a Gen 2 SHO. And I was gonna buy one. In fact, before I bought my Cobra, 
I went to go buy a Gen 1. I had a buddy load up a U-Haul trailer and you know had already looked at the car. We were we were going. It was up in Pennsylvania when I was living in Maryland. It was up in Pennsylvania. And we were heading up there to go pick up the car. You know, I had already looked at it, agreed to the price and everything. We were we were headed up to go pick it up and for some reason, I don't know why, perhaps, you know, I wasn't as experienced with buying cars as I am now, but uh, looking the car over, you know, it was in a little bit of rush shape. It definitely needed some work, but I, I was more or less making sure the body was free of rust and everything. And it looked all good, and I was just doing a final check, you know, going around the car, doing a final check before we loaded it up on the trailer, and I paid the dude money. You know, I got in the car, turned the key on, and I, I think... I put down the back windows or something and then wouldn't go back up. I'm like, oh crap, that ain't good. So I thought maybe, you know, if I go around the back side of the car, open up the door to see the window that wasn't going down and I looked at, I didn't even see it. I'm just using Buster as an example, but let's say this was the rear door jam of the car. There was a hole, like I kid you not. It, it was like from here all the way around. It was like a freaking football would fit in there size rust hole and that was in the corner the door that the window wasn't going down in so i'm like oh my god it was almost like the universe was telling like that was its way of saving me from buying this car obviously it had major problems there i don't even understand how i didn't spot that when i went to go look at the car initially like I said, it was just probably from my inexperience, but you know, that was just the universe's way of saving my ass on getting stung real bad. So yeah, I was gonna be a proud owner. It was a silver 92, black interior, five speed car. Oh yeah, it ran good. I was surprised the first time I ever drove it out with the owner on a test drive, it felt good. I was surprised how strong that V6 felt. I'm like, dang, no wonder these cars were notorious back in the day. Like, that V6 pulled hard. So, I always loved those SHOs. I still would love one, but I don't know. It's like just, you know, kind of just moving on from all these old ideas and the sentiments I have with these projects that I never had a chance to do. Because there's just so many cars. It's like, so many cars, so little money, so little time. I keep finding myself stuck in this Ford bubble because I keep going back to all these cars that I wanted and I never could have. You know, I want to break out of the Ford bubble, but it's like I feel like I'm not done yet. <laughs> I'm not done with my fix or repair dailies and I have unfinished business. But who knows? Who knows what the next project will be? Like, right now, unfortunately, it's just... N Ooh, Dragonfly. Come here. Wow. Never mind. I'm really holding off until I buy a house because the one car garage thing ain't working. I really don't have space to keep another car right now. So that's why Buster is just getting all the attention. It just sucks because I know that's probably a limiting factor on growing my channel because I don't really have too much going on at the moment. But, uh, you know, adult responsibilities kicked in and I'd rather have a house uh, before another project car. And then I can get a project car, but I want to buy my own house instead of renting and I need a two-car garage and some extra space you know the interesting part is being a youtuber now not just being a consumer of YouTube you know watching YouTube videos like actually making YouTube videos I find myself still spending unbelievable amounts of time watching YouTube videos and I just see all these youtubers I'm like either your parents have deep pockets you are born into generational wealth or you make decent money and you have horrible money managing skills and you just blow all your money on your cars and you live in like a one bedroom studio apartment it's crazy to think how these youtubers can afford so many different cars and i'm like there ain't no way you're making that much money off YouTube by itself. Oh, hey, UPS showed up. And I think he's bringing me some goodies, which will be used for future videos. Hey, how you doing? Hey, not too bad. Awesome, thank you. No problem, have a good one. Hey, you as well. It was indeed for us. 
I've been waiting for this because this is some content in this bag. Don't get too excited. It's not nothing crazy. Let's see if we can take a sneak peek of what's in here. What's what's this? Industrial endoscope. Hmm. Do we have some tools in here? This is the one I've been really waiting for. Kind of got sold on a bunch of Timu tools, so I thought, eh, you know what? Let me order a bunch of Timu tools and we'll go ahead and check them out. Look at this, straight off the boat, baby. Straight off the boat. Wonder what kind of tool this is. Oh yeah, I've been wanting one of these bad boys. So future video going over how this baby works. I mean, I mean it works coming out of the box, so that's nice. Well, oh, they even include sockets. How nice of them. But that I'm saving that for the review. I'm not giving away now. I said I have some other tools here that I really want to go over. And that will be in a whole nother video of going over cheap Timu tools and seeing how worth it or not worth it they are. So anywho, back to my rant. Yeah, it's just crazy to think how these people, how these other YouTubers, I mean, I know some of them are, do have money, but some smaller channels, I'm like, there is just no way. YouTube is paying you enough to have like five cars. Like you have five car payments, but I guess there is a way because they're doing it somehow. Yeah, I'll get there one day. Like I've said in the last video, Buster, the turbo test and all that, I'm gonna hold off on any more performance mods on Buster for a little while. Um, for a couple reasons. Reason one is, like I was saying, Buster's running pretty good, and I think I'm pretty much at the limit of the current setup. I was a bit wrong on that turbocharger, but I've learned a lot since making that assumption. As we know, there's no good information on this turbo from Ford or from anyone. No one knows much of anything about it other than it exists. You know, I'm just trying to figure it out because going off what we do know, it's a 5063 with a, I think a 6.68 AR hot side and a 0.72 AR cold side. Like it's a decent sized turbo. Like going off those figures, it's you you think it would keep up with an NX2. And theoretically, the cold side can keep up with an NX2. And this is one thing I didn't even consider. But as I've learned more, as I've gathered the data and done the testing, and I'm learning more about how all of this works, I've realized that while the front side of the turbo might be able to support or flow enough air to support five, 550 wheel horsepower. The hot side cannot. And I don't think it's because of the housing so much. I think the housing is big enough on the hot side to support over 500 wheel horsepower. The turbine itself is the limiting factor. Because I think an NX2 is a 5252, whereas this turbo is a 5063. So I've been thinking to myself, you know, how I said I wanted to port the turbo and see how much of a difference that made. After thinking about it, I don't think that's going to make any difference at all. I mean, okay, it might make a little difference, but as long as that 50 millimeter turbine is in there, th that's it. That is the choke on that turbo. You get rid of that 50 millimeter, you go up something bigger, 58 or a 60 millimeter, that's where the power is at. I'm not sure if a 58 would be best or it's best to give you a little bit of headroom and do a 60 and probably be a little bit lazier, but not too much, but do a 60 millimeter turbine and it'll be a 60, 60, 30 with a ported housing on both sides. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I think that's the jam. I think that, that is what that turbo needs in order to make power. Theoretically, both housings port it as much as they possibly can be with a 60 millimeter turbine and a 60 millimeter or 63 millimeter front compressor wheel. That's a 600 horsepower turbo all day long. So we'll have to see what happens there. You know, I just uploaded my thousand EcoBoost video. And remember, I kind of been waiting off on that because it's had a copyright claim on it. And sadly, even though I've uploaded it, 
it still has the copyright claim on it. They're reviewing it. They've never said anything yet. And it's just so annoying. And it's not a YouTube thing. It's the owner of said copyrighted material. But, you know, we're talking about billion dollar, you know, or multi-million or billion. I don't know if they're a billion. Probably multi, you know, hundred million uh, dollar record label who owns rights to that song, the original song. I don't think I'll ever hear anything back from them. So... At this point, it's just a matter of just getting some attention to the channel. I ain't getting money for it because the way it works is if I monetize the video, the money's gonna go to them, not me. And I'm like, you know what? If I can't get money, you ain't getting money either. So ain't nobody getting money on that. It's just for attention and views. So that that is what it is. You know, while my YouTube channel has been doing a little bit better recently, it's just not doing what I need it to do in order to be at the level of craziness I want to be at. You know, like that's the thing, I just, I feel like I have so many cool things I could do, just, uh, you know, I can't. I'm limited. And that's why it pisses me off, pardon my language, but it really does upset me a little bit because when I see these up and coming YouTubers, like we all are, you know, in, in this day and age, Everyone wants to be a YouTuber. I see these YouTubers who are, you know, small channels building themselves up, building their presence, but they're out here acting like a fool. They're acting like, you know, I don't know what they're acting like. Some of them act like they're fake. Like, there ain't no way you act like this in reality. Maybe you do. Maybe you're just a giant douchebag. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's possible. A lot of them are just out here gloating. Um about their cars they're not really making content like that's enjoyable it's like i just bought this new gt500 i just bought this new c8 corvette i just it's just like okay in my head i'm saying okay you just spent a lot of money there you just spent a lot of money there you just spent a lot of money there all you're doing is just buying cars saying it's for making content, but you don't really ever do anything cool with them. You literally do everything everyone else can do. Buy a car, bolt on every possible part that anyone and everyone possibly can put on it. Make videos of running a number or making runs against other cars. And it's just like, oh my God, these are the ones getting all of the attention. These are the ones getting all of the money. Here I am wanting to build some awesome, unique projects just to showcase what is possible. I'm a budget-oriented person, so I'm gonna be doing things on the cheap. So it's like, yes, you can build awesome crap for little money. You don't have to spend a six-figure budget building a car like most of these YouTubers out here seem to showcase. It just boils my blood, man. But ain't nothing I can do. I just got to ride the waves, you know what I'm saying? Until I am at the point where I'm the one on top of the wave or I'm the one making the wave, okay? That's the thing. You don't want to be riding the wave. You want to be making the waves. You don't want to be the trend follower. You want to be the trend setter. And I'm confident. I'm confident I can, I can be that guy. Just going, it just takes time, sadly. And as this video has drawn on long enough, you're wondering what was the purpose of it? Nothing. Notice the playlist this video's in? It's in the vlog. It's just me talking, that's all. It's really nothing more than filler content. But here before long, I'm gonna go out and bust those tools out and we're gonna give them a shot. So that'll be in the next video you see, which will be cool. Hopefully they're good enough tools because if they are, for the money I paid, unbe unbeatable, absolutely. I don't care where it come from. Saving me money, letting me do the work I need to do, that's all that matters. So until that video, I think that's gonna wrap it up here for this video. Let me know what you think about everything I've had to say so far, but otherwise it's gonna wrap it up. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and keep a lookout for next Cars Created video. 